Hi friend, it's Ron from cammastery.com where you can go to learn how to make great videos with Camtasia. This is a free lesson Friday, which means you get a free lesson right from my Camtasia Mastery course. If you want to get the entire course, you can head over to cammastery.com slash store and pick up that course. Now onto the video. We now want to talk about transitions. A transition is going to allow us to go from one clip to another and have some sort of action as it goes from one clip to another. Now we remember that transitions are here on the left. I can click that in my tools panel or I can use the T key to get to transitions. Why would I use a transition? Well, remember we had this intro video here where it was the triangles and if I play this, it plays these triangles and then just jumps right to me. And that's kind of a harsh jump. And so instead of that quick jump, I want to change that. I want to have it be a little bit more subtle as it goes from one to the other. So what I'll do is I will go to transitions and I'll grab the fade transition and I'll drag it down. Now notice as I'm dragging, it's showing me with yellow highlights where I can put this transition. It's saying I could fade in my clip. I could fade from this clip into the next or between these two clips or these two clips or these two or these two or at the end of this one or at the beginning of this one. I can't fade my audio tracks. It just makes sense. Fading is something that you can only do visually. You, you're not fading something visually with these audio tracks. Now we'll talk about audio fades in a little bit, but right now it's showing me exactly where I can and can't put this fade transition. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to put it between these two. Now as far as the transitions go, I don't want you using most of these. All right, most of these are not as professional as I would prefer. It's something that you might do if you're having fun or if this was just, you know, like for a family video or something, you might want to use them. But for the most part, I'm not going to. I'm going to use fade. I could use fade through black. I like slide left and slide right. Both of those are professional enough. But whatever transitions you want to use, try and use them and just be consistent with them. So what you don't want to do is say, well, I'll do a fade this time and then a circle stretch the next time and then a fold the next time and then a page turn the next time. Notice also how I leave my mouse over top of these so I can get an idea of what it is. So if I wasn't sure what fade through black means, it goes from one to the other with black in the middle. Or if I wanted to see what slide left looks like, oh, I see, okay, everything slides off to the left. So I get a preview by letting my mouse rest over top of one of those transitions. Now, it's tough to see what's going on here, so I'm going to zoom in because I want to edit this transition. So here I am, I have the triangles and dots, I have my face here, and then I see that this thing here is showing me the transition. Now as I look at it, I see a few things. One, when I let my mouse rest over it, it tells me the type of transition it is. It says that it's a fade. It tells me when it begins and when it ends, and its duration. So it says that this is going for one second. So remember, there are 30 frames per second. So that means if this transition is one second long, then 15 frames are on this side, 15 frames are on this side. So as I try to stretch this and make this longer, I can see that it's increasing by multiples of two because it needs to put one on either side. So I can say, um, you know, one second and 10 frames, one second and 12 frames, one second and 14 frames, all right? So it's very easy to change this duration just by clicking and dragging. Now another thing I can do is if I said I wanted a different transition, I could grab that different transition and drag it down here and just replace it. And now it says I'm using the flip transition or I'm using the slide left transition. Well, I don't want that. I want to use fade, but I just wanted to show you that if you happen to grab the wrong one or you want to test one, you can get it to the duration you want and you can just drag another transition to its place. So you'll notice when I drag a transition down to a clip, it has a set time. In this case, it's set at one second. Now, this first one, when it came down, it was also at one second. Perhaps though, I want it to be longer. Maybe I want most of my transitions to be two seconds, or I want them to be half of a second. I can change that under preferences. So I can go to edit, preferences, or control in the comma key and I can go to the timing tab and change this transition duration that's default. So I can say, well, instead of one second, let me make it 0.5 and click OK. Now I can delete this transition, so I'll just click on it once. Now I can go back to the top and drag a new transition down. And now when I look at it, I see, OK, yep, yeah, it's a duration of, and it says 15 frames, which is half of a second. 
and I just want to preview this transition as I'm going. So as I look at this, I can see that as it's transitioning, it's fading from this, from these dots and triangles here into my face slowly, and then more of me and less of the triangles as I go through. So what it's doing is it's capturing, it's understanding that it wants part of my video and part of the other video. So let's look at these options. I'm gonna right click this transition and I see there's an option here to use trimmed content in the transition. And what that means is if I were to remove this transition and I'm going to take my clip and I'm gonna move it up here. What I did was I took out the first part of this video. Do you remember that? So over here in this first part of the video, I cut it out because I was looking off to the side. And so that part was trimmed out. And so what this is saying is when I drag this down, do you want to use that trimmed time? So if I go and make this a ridiculous amount of time and look at this, when it starts to do the transition, it sees that I'm over here not looking at the camera at all. And maybe I don't want to use that trimmed content. All right, so it's not until you know, closer to here that I want to include it. Now again, I wouldn't use that, but occasionally I do have some footage where there are things that I don't want included, you know, like me sitting here looking like this or me looking away. I don't want those things to be included in the transition. And so for that, what I'll do is I will right click and I will choose to not use the trimmed content in the transition. So now instead, my face is frozen at whatever this first frame is. So you can see no matter where I am on this timeline, it's still just my face. And similarly on the other side, it's just those white dots and white triangles. Okay, it's not using anything that's on either side. So like I said, there will be times where you trim out some things that you don't want in and you add the transition and then you see them again and you say, oh, I took those out, I didn't want those. The way to fix that is right click and uncheck use trimmed content in the transition. Another thing to notice is when I'm dragging that transition down and I get it close to this area, I can see that it will show me it will fade from this track into the next or just the beginning of this track. Or if I go to the middle, I can get both a fade at the beginning of the track and at the end of the track. If I go further to the right, it will just be between these two tracks and not at the beginning. And if I continue over, it'll be at the beginning and the end of this track. Continue over just here. So notice that you have a few options and it depends on where you let go of your mouse where that effect will be applied.